We've previously demonstrated the various controls of the airplane, with the exception of the throttle, which varies the power output of the engine. We're not attempting to give you a course in the theory of aerodynamics, but some understanding of the engine's job may help you in your flying. For instance, the power plant of any ground-borne vehicle produces forward motion simply to take you where you want to go. But the power plant of an airplane produces forward motion, first of all, to make the airplane fly, and secondly, to take you where you want to go. Driving along a level highway in an automobile, if you close the throttle by taking your foot off the gas, you simply slow down and stop. In an airplane, in level flight, if you cut off the power and hold the plane level, as soon as its forward motion falls below a certain speed, it will start to sink. An automobile going uphill is traveling in the direction its nose is pointing. But an airplane may have its nose pointed up in a climbing attitude and still be flying a perfectly level course, not climbing at all. In fact, the airplane may be in this attitude and actually be going down. Or it may be flying in perfectly level attitude and yet be steadily going up, gaining altitude. Previously, we stated that when the wing of an airplane is tilted up, it wants to go up. When it's tilted down, it wants to go down. That's true. It does want to do these things. But its ability to do them depends upon the power of the engine. Without power, no airplane can stay in the air very long. The pull of gravity makes it want to come down. And once it is down, makes it want to stay on the ground. Then there is drag, which tries to hold the airplane back. You can observe the effects of drag when you pull your hand through water. The faster you try to move your hand, the more the water tries to hold it back. Likewise, the air is constantly trying to hold the airplane back. To counteract the forces of gravity and drag, we have the power of the engine to pull the airplane through the air. This force is also referred to as thrust. As the power of the engine creates enough pull to overcome drag, the plane moves forward and the air passing over and under the wings creates lift, making them want to go up. The greater the forward speed, the greater the tendency of the wings to rise. So, whenever a plane has enough forward speed to create enough lift to overcome gravity, the plane will take off and fly. Whenever the force of lift is greater than the force of gravity, that starts the plane on an upward course gaining altitude. Whenever the force of lift is less than the force of gravity, that starts the plane on a downward course, losing altitude. Whenever lift and gravity are exactly equal, the plane will continue on whatever course has already been established, whether that be up or down or straight and level. So, a plane may remain in perfectly level attitude and still gain or lose altitude, depending upon the variations in power or pull, as it varies the plane's speed. However, the rate at which a plane gains or loses altitude is not determined by airspeed alone, but by a combination of airspeed and attitude. When the wings of a plane are tilted up, they want to go up. If at the same time there's plenty of power, they will go up. However, if you reduce the throttle, the wings still want to go up. But since there's not enough power to take them up quite so steeply, a compromise results and the plane goes up at a more shallow angle. So you see, the performance of an airplane depends as much on what you do with your throttle as it does on what you do with your stick and rudder pedals. And incidentally, since this is the case, keep your hand on the throttle as much of the time as possible, except when you're trimming the plane. When you're cruising along in straight and level flight, you'll carry roughly about one-third to one-half throttle. The tachometer on your instrument panel will tell you that the engine is turning over at the rate of 1,750 to 1,850 revolutions per minute, which is specified for cruising in a type plane. With the throttle at this setting, and the plane in approximately the level attitude, you should be able to maintain a level course without gaining or losing altitude. Now open the throttle to about the three-quarters position, and at the same time, ease your nose up about here. This is the climbing attitude for this particular plane. In this attitude, the plane will travel upward at about this angle. 
Let's say that in this correct or most efficient climbing attitude, the plane would gain this much altitude in 10 seconds time. If you pull the nose up any higher, say to about here, you decrease your airspeed, and although you might be climbing at a slightly steeper angle, you'd gain altitude more slowly. In 10 seconds, you'd be about here instead of here. If you drop the nose below the correct climbing attitude, say to about here, you would travel upward at this angle. Again, you would gain altitude more slowly. So the correct climbing attitude is that attitude in which you will gain altitude the fastest at the established climbing throttle setting. But keeping the plane in the climbing attitude is hard work. The stick keeps wanting to go forward because the nose doesn't want to stay up there. So once you have the nose in the desired position, trim the plane until all pressure is off the stick, making it easy to keep the nose where you want it. Now take a good look at the position of the nose in relation to the horizon. And notice the distance of the top wing and the broomsticks or spreaders above the horizon. Another cue to the correct climbing attitude is the sound of the engine. It's working harder than it did in level flight, but it still sounds all right. up too high, you can hear the engine begin to labor. You can see and feel a slight vibration in the plane. If we let the nose sink below the correct climbing attitude, the engine will speed up. It takes a little time to speed up or slow down as the attitude changes. again as we bring the nose back up to the correct climbing attitude. And notice that the sound of the engine changes rather slowly. When we're ready to bring the plane back to level flight, we first ease the nose back down to the level attitude. Then a few seconds later, after the speed has had a chance to pick up a little, we bring the throttle back to the setting for cruising and trim the plane for straight and level flight. Next, let's find out about the glide. 